So today we have an, actually an unusual service, not like our normal uh, Sunday worship service. Uh, we're beginning um, a 40-day period of, um, of offering and devotion. So, yeah, in our unification tradition, we do lots of conditions, we call it, you know, like fasting for a day or things like that. So, from today until uh, August 31st is 40 days, and September 1st is the, will be the 11th anniversary of our founder, Reverend Moon, Father Moon, we call True Father, uh, his, his death and ascension into the spiritual world. So, last week... Um, the international president of the Family Federation for World Peace uh, gave a presentation, uh, a sermon at the Chunwan Church. It's the church around the Chumpyeong Lake area. That's where our big spiritual retreat is in, in Korea. And uh, Surak area, you hear him mention it. And uh, Mother Moon asked us, he said, this is really valuable content. So please share this with everyone. Everyone should watch this video, you know, during these uh, 40 days, or, and especially if possible today, during our kickoff, because today we're kicking it off. So it's an hour long, so I figured, okay, let me tweak it a little bit. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show um, the, the first five minutes, which is kind of like introduction, and also gives you a little bit of background of, of what Mother Moon is now doing right now, uh, since Father Moon is past the spirit world, Mother Moon is leading the movement, um, doing in, um, uh, yeah, in, in Korea, and particularly in that area around the uh, Chongpyeong Lake area, the Hyojin uh, area. So, um, yeah, I'll show that introduction, and then I'll, it basically shares a lot about what's happening around the world, and I'm going to summarize that, and at the end, I'll just show the last, like, 10 minutes of, of, of his talk. So, we're doing a little hybrid today, you know, a little bit of video and a little bit of live. So, um, yeah, so if you can turn off the lights and let's, uh, I'll start the video. Respected members of the Chun Won Church, good morning. I am Song Yeon Chun, International President of the Family Federation. Today, on such a meaningful holiday, Sunday, I am very happy to be able to share a message and report on our world tour in the presence of the blessed families of Chun Won Church, whom I dearly respect and love. If we are earnest, it will surely come to pass. That is the title of my sermon. True Mother offered these words at the dedication of the Chon Won Gung Chon Il Sanctum on May 7. Heavenly Parent, receive glory and rejoice with us. We are immensely grateful. We are so deeply grateful to dedicate this beautiful holy temple. It is certain that the people of this whole nation and the whole world will come to know that Heavenly Parent is always with us. We love you. We thank you, Heavenly Parent Manse. Most beloved Chun Won Church members, there have been many prophets who have received revelations that Sorak town in Kapyong County is the capital city of heaven. Some religious have designated it as a site of their main temple or as the holy site even today. Sorak is a place where many devotions are offered. When True Parents set out in 1960s to find the Chon Pyeong holy ground, True Parents blessed this holy place with the following words. This champion land must become the homeland of the world and the homeland of the heart of all humankind. It was amid much devotion that True Parents built the Chongpyeong Training Center and the Chon Jongkong. Following the development of the Chongwon complex where Ponghyang Won, Father's Tomb, is located, on May 7, True Parents dedicated the Chongwon Gong, which represents the culmination of Heaven's providence and the providence of restoration. Chongwon Gong is the temple among all temples where Heavenly Parent and true parents are revealed and are residing. 
From a vertical perspective, it is the place where heavenly parents, true parents and all blessed families are united. From a horizontal perspective, it is a sacred site that connects all people of the world within the family federation as brothers and sisters. In the future, Chonwon Gong will be a center for educating people about the noble work true parents carried out throughout their lives and about the culture of heart. Amid the amazing work of heavenly parents, this will become the homeland of our hearts, where all humanity will come to bow before and praise our heavenly parents. Through the 14 Chonil Songhua artwork within the Chonil Sanctum, the Chonwongong will serve as a place of witnessing through which visitors from around the world will gain full understanding of heavenly parents and true parents. The Holy Sanctum will be a place where people will be deeply touched, come to repentance, and experience a change of heart as a result of heavenly parents' heart, love and teachings, and will of true parents. The dedication of the Chan Won Gung and Chan Yid Sanctum is a projection of True Mother's sacrificial life in which she has embraced the world with a heart as desperate as if she were searching for one small needle in the middle of a desert. Finally, on the foundation of the hard work and devotion of True Mother, that she has invested throughout her tearful life course to discover our heavenly parent, the original parent that humankind lost, and to realize a permanent world of peace, a new era, when heavenly parent can firmly settle on earth, has been ushered in, an era for which we have so earnestly longed. Beloved members, let us extend our profound gratitude and honor to True Mother with a thunderous round of applause for this outstanding victory. So, uh, Reverend Song, who's giving the message there, um, he's the international president of the Family Federation for World Peace, and uh, he just recently did a world tour. Uh, and, and so, after this, introduction, he went in and basically gave a report. Um, he talked all about um, his uh, travels to uh, South America, uh, Central America, and to Europe, and a lot of the things that are happening there. And the, the purpose of the tour, there were four main purposes. One is really to identify the situation of the, the movement in each of these different countries and, and regions, and to develop strategies for each country. So figuring out, okay, how many uh, members are there actually? You know, because it's kind of a, 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 a mixed bag. And you know, where's our leadership? Um, what's the legal status in different countries to make sure that the Family Federation is established as a legal organization? Um, and just aligning with uh, the vision that uh, Mother Moon is now encouraging us to go forward. If we're going to make a difference in the world, we need to have a larger impact. So then the second was identifying future leaders. Um, and really looking to raise up uh, young people and making sure that every region, every country has some kind of educational program that's nurturing people in leadership position um, for, the, for the future. And then uh, thirdly, just to, to work with uh, the families in, in each region uh, around the goals of growth and development. Um, that focus. So uh, there's lots, there are lots of very interesting, amazing things that are happening all around the world. And I'm not, I, I encourage you watch the video. You know, you can uh, get it in your e email. But in, in South America, he challenged the national leaders. He says, okay, so, you know, who can um, really focus in bringing restoration of your whole nation? You know, and three countries immediately jumped up and said, yeah, we will. So Argentina, Colombia, and Brazil. And of course, our movement is really large in, in, in those countries as well. But um, they were the ones that responded immediately. And then uh, Reverend Song, after that, he moved to talk and to share about uh, the spiritual Im impact, how, how spirit world has an impact on changing things in the world around us. 
And so he brought up the story, he shared some of his own testimony about being a missionary in Kenya, and he also served as a missionary in, um, in Oceania, a lot of different uh, uh, countries in, in Fiji and a lot of different islands. Um, but finally he became the regional leader for uh, all of Europe. And at that time, when he was in, when he was in Europe, um, there was a lot of persecution of our movement. Basically, Reverend Moon was banned from traveling to any of these countries. And so members in, in each of those countries have been doing conditions, 40-day prayer conditions and, and, and all, you know, just determination for years. And in 2005, um, uh, finally, the ban in England was lifted after 27 years. And uh, Reverend Song was with um, uh, Father and Mother Moon. They were in Romania doing a, a speaking tour in, in Romania. And as soon as Father Moon heard that, he jumped up and said, let's go to England. <laughs> so they went to England right away, you know, and, and they had uh, some uh, rallies and some uh, great uh, events there. And then uh, there's also in Europe, there's a thing called the Schengen Treaty. Basically, it's to deal with criminals. So if, you know, if one country bans someone, then all of the EU countries will ban that person. So Father Moon was similarly banned from all those, all those countries. And so it took more time. He had to go country by country to overturn that Schengen uh, treaty ban. Uh, so 2007 was when that happened. Again, all during this time, uh, members and even people who were not members but were supportive of the movement and activities um, were making conditions and prayers to, to break through this. So the point he made is that it's so important that we understand the value of prayer and the value of our, our spiritual life. That you know the, the heavenly spirit world wants to work, wants to help us, you know, but it needs our responsibility. God's not just sitting, okay, tell me what to do and I'll do what you want. No, he wants to see us invest, and, and the theme of it, if we are earnest, if we invest our utmost sincerity, then that moves heaven and earth to accomplish things. So when we have that kind of heart and that focus and that emotion. So I want to show just another 10 minutes. This is uh, President Song. After he went through all this history, which is really interesting, and, but, I, you know, I encourage you to watch the video. Um, he brought together to just bring these key points for us to focus in, in this time, because the world is changing so quickly right now. And there's so many things happening around the world. I and mean, we see, it's unbelievable to think that Russia would attack Ukraine. It's like, how, how in the world could that happen in this time? And, and some of the conflicts that are happening in Africa, Sudan, in the Middle East, the world is, you know, it's, we've been in a real moment of expectation where there's so much good that could be happening now, and yet we see all these problems happening. So Mother Moon is continually encouraged. We need to focus on the internal as well as the practical side to bring about healing and change in the world. So uh, if you can get the lights again, and uh, we'll just watch the last 10 minutes of President Song's uh, message. A dream mustn't just end as a dream. It must be accomplished. There is nothing you cannot achieve if you invest utmost sincerity. Dear members of the Chan Won Church, the path I have walked is too insufficient to speak of in front of the seniors and elders who have stood at the forefront of the providence, overcoming ordeal after ordeal. But what I have kept deep in my heart while following the path of my will so far is this. He chooses the foolish to shame the wise, and he chooses the weak to shame the strong. For that reason, I have no choice but to confess that I am still foolish, weak and lacking in many ways, as I take on the enormous responsibilities I've been given, I'm actually aware that I fall short. Therefore, 
with a more humble attitude, I will always think about what the will of heaven is that led me to be appointed international president and senior pastor at the Chonwon Church here in Sorak, where True Mother lives. I will always be together with you, thinking about the mission I must fulfill without fail in these times. I will not be a leader who imposes my thoughts, asserting my position at the forefront, but will be a victorious in Vision 2027, together through service, communication, harmony and cooperation. Dear members of Chongwon Church, if you really want something earnestly, it will happen. If you pray for it earnestly and take action with an earnest heart, it will come to pass. I confirm this again through the world speaking tour we are conducting. The question is whether our hearts are alive with earnestness. As we observe our brothers and sisters who receive heaven's call and faithfully devote their lives, we should ask ourselves whether we are really living as earnestly. Mother is truly desperate every moment. She lives with an earnest heart every day, seeking to bring heavenly parents' ideal to reality, aware of heavenly parents' dream of finding his lost sons and daughters. Mother asks us today also to witness and achieve substantial church growth with an earnest desire for half of the world's population to come to know and attend heavenly parents. I believe that Mother's earnest wish for the restoration of Sorak and Gapyong stems from heavenly parents' earnestness. And I'm sure that this dream will come true as soon as there are more children who resonate with that earnest heart. Mother hopes that all of us will become as earnest as heavenly parent and true mother and work in unity to achieve our dreams. Brothers and sisters, in order to realize our dream and to be victorious in the providence, we must know the current time of the providence. So with reference to mother's recent messages, I would like to point out that the current era is one, the era of substantial attendance, two, the era of pursuing the original essence, three, the era of loyal heart beyond filial piety, and four, the era of presenting the results of our witnessing. In keeping with these four points to be aware of in this time, our attitude needs to also have the following five characteristics. The first aspect of our attitude is maintaining our center. This means becoming completely one with true parents who are guiding the present era. The second aspect of our attitude is spirituality. We must listen to the voice of God wherever we attend God. We must allow our true Father to walk freely. This is also the reason we should go to the Chonshim one so that the absolute good spirits can also work with us. That's why the Chanshim one prayer is very important. The third aspect of our attitude is relationship. We need to communicate. We need to communicate and share. The fourth aspect of our attitude is substantial growth. Mother has been speaking of genuine church growth. Real growth, I think, is a both quantitative growth and qualitative growth. There are two sides to it. Numerical quantitative growth is an unquestionable increase in the number of our church members. But qualitative growth is a little different. If someone who used to attend a service once a month comes to the church service twice, that's qualitative doubling in terms of growth. 
If we offer twice as much for our tithe, that's a qualitative doubling in terms of growth. If each member of our family becomes one with True Parents' heart, if our understanding of the providence increases, if our love and the love of the church expands, that's qualitative growth. We need qualitative growth. We definitely need it. We at the Chonwon Church must pursue qualitative growth, as well as quantitative growth. Only in this way can we advance towards genuine growth, genuine church growth through real witnessing success. The fifth and last aspect of our attitude is sincerity. We need to let people feel that we sincerely love Sorak Town, Kapyong County, and our nation by practicing true love. Our church will change if we truly and earnestly move forward with these five aspects of attitude while being aware of the four points about this time. Dear Chonwon Church members, lastly, I would like to talk about collective intelligence. Whether smart people get together and make a foolish group or ordinary people get together and make an excellent group, depends on how collective intelligence is exercised. It is easy to break an arrow in half, but you cannot easily break a tightly bound bundle of arrows. That is the great power of collective intelligence. Collective intelligence will get you far. On the front line of the providence, we always encounter challenges and obstacles on our path. How can we overcome these challenges? We can do it through the power of collective intelligence. I hope that in the future, Chonwon Church will unleash its collective intelligence through sincere communication and sharing ideas back and forth in the spirit of service and harmony, and that you will establish transparent and efficient decision-making and approval processes rather than sticking with conventional practices bound by the laws of inertia. Thus, I hope that pastors and blessed families will put all their efforts into witnessing so that they can harvest the very best fruits of that investment. In the future, the international headquarters will continue to communicate and share with the field rather than give unilateral directions. We will ensure that accounting processes are transparent for all organizational operations and events. We will systematically organize budgets, approval lines, and post-implementation audits for all events and operations to increase operational transparency, thus to be an international headquarters and family federation that is worthy of its members' trust. Thank you. Dear members of the Chonwon Church, we have hope as we enter this new era. There is nothing to be afraid of. We have the only begotten daughter, our true mother, who is, has become one with heavenly parent. If we become one with True Mother, pray earnestly and work diligently and unite through collective intelligence and effective organizational power, then explosive growth in witnessing, substantial growth in our church, the restoration of Sorak Township and Gapyeong County, and furthermore, the miracle of the heavenly unified Korea will no longer be just a dream, but will become a reality. If we all work in unity, praying earnestly and devoting ourselves in order to bring our heavenly parent and true parent's dream into reality, God will surely bring our dreams and hopes into fruition.
Mother's footsteps never falter as she walks the path of the providence. Why is this? It is because mother knows that when she's facing difficulty, heavenly parent is facing even greater difficulty. That's why we must determine ourselves now. With life or death's resolve, we must determine never to be a burden for mother, but instead to become mature sons and daughters. We must attend heavenly parents and true parents in substantial ways and fulfill our responsibilities in order to create a proud record of real, qualitative and quantitative growth. Once again, let us not be unfilial and disloyal people who make true mother lonely but instead become filial sons and daughters, loyal patriots of Chonilguk. Let us report our results on expressing joy and victory and march forward towards the victory of Vision 2025 that Heavenly Parent and True Parents so much desire to see. Brothers and sisters, if you agree, and if you determine yourself, I would appreciate it if you could honor True Parents with a big round of applause. Yeah, the bottom line is, if we are earnest, it will surely come to pass. Or with utmost sincerity and utmost devotion, it moves heaven. It moves heaven and earth. So, uh, yeah, it's challenging. You know, we have uh, the, the translator, sometimes it's hard for me to catch everything there. But So, just to, to do a quick summary, I think the, the main points for us to take away and even thinking and uh, that I want to have our discussion afterwards with is just these key points about where we need to focus um, in order to have a fulfilling life and, and also that our movement can really have the impact that we want to have in bringing healing in the world, in the larger environment. So the first thing is, the point he made was maintaining our center. So what's our center? God, right? You know, we, there's all kinds of ideas and theories and, you know, ideas and plans. I really appreciate, we just have gone to a reorganization church worldwide in the church. So we have a, a new uh, national leader in, in America. And I was really grateful President Damian Dunkley came back. And the first thing he said when he came back, he says, so I didn't come back with a PowerPoint of all the things we're going to do, all my new ideas, right? He says, you don't need my ideas. You know, and honestly speaking, I don't need your ideas. We need God's ideas, right? So the first thing he did is he set up these retreats where we went and we prayed. And just spent time praying and praying and really seeking God. And so maintaining God as our center in all the things that we do in every aspect of life. Not just church activities, but in our work, in our family life, and with our neighborhood, and in our community. Keeping God as our center. And then secondly is, is focusing on that internal and visible side, the spirituality. I mean... We need to do actions. We need to do things in the world. But we need to listen to God. Uh, the Chun Shim Wan, you know, we use a lot of Korean words, but this is a, um, um, a prayer room. Basically, in establishing prayer rooms all around the, the country. Spending quality time in, in the prayer room, even if we just make your own little altar at home. Praying and spending quality times with God. Not just my, thank you God, good God, good food, good grub, let's eat. <laughs> you know? No, the time where we really spend both the meditative prayer, where we, we listen to God, but also the active prayer where we chase away all the strange thoughts and spirits and really pray out loud that God can, can inspire us and sometimes give us ideas that we, we wouldn't have even thought of. So, focusing on that spirituality, if we really want to bring victory in our movement and in healing in the world, we've got to have that spiritual aspect handled. And then, relationships. Of course, the unification worldview is that everything is built on relationships. Even the molecules in our body and the way our body works, everything is built on that dynamic of relationships. So it's important that we also, as a community, invest in our relationships. You know, communicate and share with each other and be support for each other. And then, I liked what he brought up about substantial growth. So, yeah, we want more people, more numbers. This, you know, sometimes we can focus on the external, oh yeah, we have to witness and get more people here. 
But what's even more important is are we substantially growing ourselves spiritually? Now, when people come and participate with our movement, are they being nourished spiritually? Are we ourselves growing ourselves so that we're experiencing God more in our daily life? So, substantial growth, not just the external numbers, but the internal quality and richness, richness of our spiritual life. And then, sincerity, living uh, with true love, you know, genuinely thinking and caring uh, about others. So, uh, just to kind of bring it all together, because we're going to be entering this, this we will, today is the first day of a 40, our 40-day 40 condition and offering um, leading up to um, the uh, remembering uh, Father Moon's ascension to the spiritual world. So, for prayer, you know, we'll be praying for Father and Mother Moon, who we call true parents, that they can fulfill their mission. You know, the mission that Jesus called them to, to bring healing to this world. And that the celebration and remembrance of the, the 11th anniversary of the Sungwa, the ascension um, of uh, Father Moon, can be a, a victorious one. And also that within our church communities, we can continue to cultivate that culture of heart. You know, the truth is good, you know, and, and it's wonderful. Yeah, we've got the truth. But what really transforms our lives is God's love. The truth helps us understand, you know, the truth that God is our loving parent, you know, and, and God is always with us, and we're meant to be all people are God's children. That's an intellectual understanding. But that culture of heart is what really brings healing and change to the world. And this is what we have to continue to, to cultivate. Substantial growth. Let's pray for not just the external numbers, but the internal growth, right? Let's be praying for that. Include that in our, in our daily prayers. And also reconnect with people that we haven't seen for a long time. Yay! Nice to see coming back, you know, people we haven't seen uh, before. But, you know, that, that Jane knew and, and Alex knew. So, um, but reconnecting with people, with friends, you know, it's easy to get distant with people sometimes. And just... Saying hello, keeping that connection to people. Whether or not they come to church is not so important. That they know that they're loved and that we care for them. This is what's important, you know. We're, getting, or we're committed to building a world that includes everyone, right? Regardless of their religious tradition, there's one human family under God. And the way we do that is through relationships and keeping those connections. And then also, Mother Moon is encouraging us to work on strengthening our own education, our spiritual development education, particularly understanding how God's providence has been working, of course, throughout history, right? We have this up on the wall to point out all the parallels of history and timelines and stuff. But not just the historical stuff and the bi biblical patterns, but how God is working right now today the providential activities that are going on. And particularly why Jesus called Father and Mother Moon to stand as true parents. Not just uh, the Messiah and the Savior, but actually true parents. So that this vision of a world, one human family, with God as a loving parent of all people, at the core of everything. And also understanding deeply the mission of, of uh, both Father Moon, but also a Mother Moon. Because we never had someone that stood in the position of only begotten daughter. So, with this, during these 40 days, you know, we'll be doing visitations. You know, we'll be, of course, witnessing and outreach, offering devotions. Please, you know, determine every day you're going to offer some prayer. You know, choose, choose a time. Um, and we're going to do some more educational workshops. We'll probably start, start up our Saturday studies. Though, we may do the study, Saturday studies at our house. So you'll be invited to come to our home and we'll, we'll do some uh, studying and, and a small group study at home. And, uh, then, and then a donation. Everyone is encouraged to offer a symbolic number. I mean, $100 is kind of standard, but most important is that we make an offering from our heart. You know, so even if you can't make you know, a $100 donation, make an offering of our of our finances, right? The reason we tithe is so that we let God know God can claim everything because we offer Him the first ten percent, right? So um, with that, let me conclude with this last couple of lines from um, Reverend Song's uh, sermon. He said, "Let us become filial sons and daughters, and loyal patriots of Chonoguk, the Heavenly Kingdom. Chonoguk is the Heavenly Kingdom. Let us report our results." expressing joy and victory 
and march forward toward the victory of Vision 2025. That's two years. That Heavenly Parent, God our Heavenly Parent, and true parents, Father, Mother, Moon, so much desire to see. Amen? Amen. Okay, please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for your investment in each one of us. And this morning as we, we come together and we fellowship and have time on this Sunday, we really want to reorient our, our hearts and minds back to you, to bring you back to the center of all that we do. Thank you so much for never giving up on us, for always being with us and always being there to encourage us. We pray, Heavenly Parent, that we can continue to grow, deepen our relationship and experience you, and also that our relationship with you can spill over to be a blessing to the people in our lives. So we thank you, Heavenly Parent, and offer up ourselves again to you gratefully as your sons and daughters, as blessed central families. I pray this, amen and adieu. Thank you.